So let's talk about the Z80 computer again. Um, I haven't been posting any videos about this because I had uh, quite a lot of issues with this. Um, and unfortunately, um, some of them I can't really resolve with the design as it is. And first one, you can actually already see when I touch this. These pin headers and the sockets, um, they're not really great for this sort of thing. And they don't really make contact all that well. Um, and all the cards are just flapping around like this. I mean, I hadn't had much contact issues yet, but um, I suspect that is some... Some of the problems stem from this. Also, doing this all on a single layer on this sort of old PCB material, um, I had to fix a lot of broken tracks, and the etching process really doesn't work all that well with that. And the other thing is, doing it in a single layer makes it necessary to have the traces be relatively long, which probably causes some issues. Then also this clock generation card, half the circuitry on here isn't working properly and this would need a complete redesign anyway. So yeah. Also this has a breakout for all the for the complete bus and everything uh, that's really not needed could just put that on an extra socket, but I was conserving space here because I expected to have much more cards. Um, the power supply is also a little bit inadequate. And I don't like the whole form factor of this a lot. The baseboard that I made is a little bit too small and then don't really see how I could put this in a case once it's done. Um, also, this misses decoupling caps just uh, basically everywhere. I mean, I could add SMD parts, but since I want to redesign this anyway, um, it's probably better just to uh, start with a clean slate. And redo most of it so this is where we'll start for the next video is basically start where the last video started the last series started and design the power supply again and then we'll see uh, where we go from there one thing that i definitely want to do is get away from these uh, pin headers and use other connectors. I'm probably going to end up using card edge connectors because I li really like the look and they they make quite a solid connection. And they're also reasonably cheap, although much more expensive than these, which is the main reason why I chose these at first is that these are these are really really cheap. And I thought I could get away with that, but um yeah, I think it causes some of the issues. I don't know yet if I'll go to double-sided construction. I probably will. But one thing that I'll definitely do... Oh, look, this even has a decoupling cap. Down here. Well, it's probably the only card that has one. Um, so I don't know if I'll go to double-sided construction, but what I'll definitely do is I'll... I reduce the spacing and I'll also um, change the track width and what the end goal is is for the cards basically to fit on this pre-cut circuit board material that I recently started putting all my circuits on these are basically just blank pieces of uh, circuit board materials. But you can get those pre-cut and that saves you from having all of these rough cut edges. And yeah, 
So this is probably the form factor I'm going to have for the cards. And I mean, you can still fit quite a lot of circuitry on there. If you look at this processor card, uh, it's basically the same size. And if you reduce the track spacing and track width, you can uh, put a lot more circuitry on there. So, yeah, this is probably the sort of form factor I'm going to choose for this. The huge benefit with this is that this is FR4 and the copper layer is a little bit thicker, so it works better with my etching process that I do. And I probably won't have to fix all the breaks in the cards as I had to do before. So, all I'll do is I'll pull all these chips, put them uh, back in their respective bags. I'll unscrew this and get the transformer out because I'm probably going to keep the transformer. And I'm also going to not do the thing with the transformer hood here. Probably for the new case, I'm just going to have it screwed down in the open and then basically have the whole thing sit in a case, the whole computer, and just have a front panel. So, this is a tap transformer and it has taps for 0, 2, 5 and this is 8 volts. So, if I redesign the power supply, I might go down to the 5 volt tab. Because it will probably be enough to have... 5 times the square root of 2 to get the 2 volts or 3 volts over 5 volt that we need for this uh, 7805 that I'm probably going to keep for the power supply although I might change it to a TO3 style case instead of the TO220 that's on here um, so let me just get all of this pulled apart alright so this is what's going in the hopes and dreams bin. And this is what we're going to keep. Although, um, I'm going to use a longer power cable because this is reasonably short and was driving me crazy while uh, trying to troubleshoot this thing. Because you can't really shove the thing around on your desk because it's hanging directly on the power socket. So. Um, longer power cable for the next one. And then, yeah, basically the chips, the bolts, this heatsink, and the transformer. We'll see if we're going to use that one or something else. But I have high hopes that this will be uh, still adequate. So, I think it's time we actually look at what the new case format is supposed to look like. All right, so here's a CAD model of what I want the computer to look like. Um, and this is in design somewhat similar to the last one, which is that it's based on a wooden board and then it has the transformer to power supply and also the back plane with the cards sticking out of it. What is new are these parts on the side here and I plan to 3D print these. These are 
relatively complicated. And they basically hold the front and back panel as well as the top, which is not pictured here. And around the back, it has an on off switch, a fuse holder, and this is just a port where the cable would come in. And it also has some strain relief, which the last one also didn't have. So as you can see, I modeled this with seven cards, and these are each the 100 by 75 PCB blanks that I've shown before. So the whole thing is 15 centimeters in height, about 30 centimeters long, and about 20 deep. So seven cards also should be plenty. I mean, I probably really only need three or four, but it's always good to give yourself some room for expansion. Because if I put all the work in and actually build a computer like this, I'd really like to um, expand on it and make this a project that I can enjoy for longer, instead of just slapping it together. So I haven't designed the front panel yet because I really don't know enough about the computer yet to actually know what I want to have on the front panel and what type of switches and LEDs and displays uh, and what have you. So yeah, we'll see within the next couple of videos how this goes. But yeah, that's... Uh, model of what I want this to look like and I'm actually rather pleased with it. It looks much better than the last one. The last one was really, it looked slapped together and also it was slapped together. Um, and that was probably one of the main reasons why it didn't work. So this time we're going to do things a little more properly, which will probably also give better results.